So for our second example, we want to use Euler's theorem to explain why the graph we have given has at least one Euler path, then define a potential Euler path. So again, for giving my illustrative skill here, we can recognize that with this graph, with this collection of vertices and edges, we have that A has degree 2, B has degree 4, C has degree 4, E has degree 3, and D has degree 3. So thinking about these pieces in the context of Euler's theorem, we have that our graph will have at least some selections here of Euler paths built from the points D and E. Where the exact path we follow, there's some variety. We have some examples that we can take for this. We have other examples we can take for this. One potential option we can use here for an Euler path would be something that might start here down at vertex E. So I'm going to dash this vertex. No, not E. I want to write E for the edge. You write 1 for the edge because that's the first one. We're going from E to B. Then we are going to go from B up to A. So we're going to come up here for our second one. Then A down to C for our third. Then we're going to come from C back over to B for our fourth. B down to D for our fifth. Then D to C coming up this way for our sixth, C to E for our seventh, and then finally E back to D for our eighth and final edge on our path through this graph where we have touched every edge exactly one time. But notice we've gone through a few of these more than once, including E we started at and then passed through another time as well as D we ended at but had to go through once along the way as well. Or sort of trial and error method gives us a whole bunch of different options. Again, we're going to see a little bit more effectively how we can find these things, but for now we're just getting some practice with what we're looking for in terms of Euler's theorem. And we'll finish here with one more case where we're going to see an example when this doesn't work. That is, we're going to look at something for case three.